welcome to the Agents of Fandom podcast. We have a very special episode today. We are speaking with the star of the hit Netflix show, Raising Dion. Josiah Young is here with us today. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing very well. This is uh, so exciting to get to talk to you. I just started watching the show um, as soon as season two came out. I binged season one and now I'm two thirds of the way through season two and I'm absolutely loving it. You're killing it. Yeah, I'm glad you love it. We uh, we we all worked really hard on that film, on that um show. Yeah, it definitely shows. It definitely shows. So I'm I'm wondering when what got you into acting? What age did you start, and what propelled this journey? Well, what got me into acting? Okay, well, I was three years old when I started. Wow. And I started with doing pageants, and I, I'm not a bragger, but. I started winning a lot, and then someone suggested to us, like, someone was in the acting business, they were like a director or a producer, and they suggested that I should try acting, and then I was like, mom, I want to do it, and then so we just took it from there. Well, that's wow, awesome. we're so and glad you did. <laughs> yeah, and your mom has been super involved with your acting career since you got started. What's it been like having her along that journey with you? Actually, it's very exhilarating. I'm really grateful that my mother is here with me because it can get stressful sometimes. You know, one time you'll get that dream job that you want, but you don't always get it. So you gotta, you, my mom helps me through that type of stress and stuff. But uh, yeah, Raising Dion was actually a dream job for me and I ended up getting it because I actually really love superheroes. We do That's too. fantastic. We do too. We got... Our whole po podcast is about it, so we're going to talk yeah. some Raising Dion, but we're, we're also going to talk some other superhero stuff with you, uh, too. We're excited about it. Um, cool. your, uh, cool. your, TV, your TV mom and dad, um, how involved are they in your life? You got Michael B. Jordan as your TV dad. You got Alicia Wainwright in, as your TV mom. Do you stay in touch with them outside of the show at all? Oh, yeah. We'll DM each other on Insta, comment on each other's posts. Yeah, we keep in touch. That's awesome. each other. That's awesome. What have, you, what have you learned from them? Actually, well, I've learned a lot from uh, both of them. One of the things I learned from um, uh, my, Mr. Michael B is that you all, like, he helped me through a scene where, like, I had to be emotional. So he, so, wow, he, so he showed me a, an episode from the show Naruto and then I was able to like, cause I had to relate to him because in an episode, his dad is like a weird projection. And then he comes back to talk to him or something. And then Naruto gets all emotional and stuff. So actually he showed me that episode and he's like, you gotta be like that. And I was like, oh, okay. Wow, we're both really big fans of Naruto. So that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's that super that cool. <laughs> I'm more of a Demon Slayer fan. That's, that's, that's crazy interesting i teach grade five i used to teach grade five i currently teach seventh grade and they all love demon slayer in seventh grade like that's their thing <laughs> i'm in fifth grade actually really oh yeah. wow demon slayer and attack on titan are the are the two are the two big ones they go they go for yeah uh, attack on titan though I, it was like interesting it was interesting it was the new type of show <laughs> Well, that's cool that I know Michael B. Jordan is a big uh, anime fan. So that's cool that you guys can bond about that type of stuff. Yeah. But uh, some, uh, there was some advice Alicia gave me too. It was that um, she taught me that it's like helped me in a lot of stuff. Like she also taught me that it, you always are like nice on set. And she was like, she was like that person that's always like that nice guy. She was that type of person. Well, props to her and props to your parents, because I think I speak for TJ and myself when I say that you have incredible manners and you are so polite. And I think that TJ and I are both have been blown away already by by just how polite and, and mature you are. Thank you. <laughs> you are very I spend welcome. A, I, spend a, I spend a lot of time around around people your age. And so it's very refreshing. Um, <laughs> And like on that note, I'm a teacher. I'm very interested in what it's like for you balancing school with, with your acting career. How tough is it to kind of navigate both of those things at the same time? Well, I had to end up going to online school. That way I wouldn't have to worry about missing. Like, because 
when I, when I go to online school, say I have to go away for a month or something. Because in, uh, in uh, Raising Dion, I had to go to Atlanta, as you know. Now, if I was still in my district, I would have been gone for six months. That's six months of school missed. Online school, I pack up my computer and all that, and I never miss a beat. That's awesome. Do you have do you have uh, like a like a set of teachers with you to help with stuff, or is it just your parents that get you through that? Oh well, it's not homeschool, but it's online school. So like okay. my teachers, oh yeah, so they be there. They either. also do it from home, but they're like they're like teachers, like they do Zoom. We do Zoom meetings. Yeah. So do all your classmates know that you're a superhero? <laughs> yeah, most of them do. <laughs> How is that? How is that dealing with that kind of pressure and that kind of fame, we'll, we'll, let's say? It's, it's not really pressure. It's like people knowing who I am. It's like, it's like really cool. It's like, it's like, that one, it's like when the nerd becomes the popular kid in school. <laughs> That's technically the only way I can define it. And I mean, that's a pretty common origin story for superheroes, too. So I love it. <laughs> it is, though. Peter <laughs> Parker, for instance. Yeah, there you're you go. A real life that's superhero. my favorite superhero. <laughs> yeah, when he fought Flash Thompson, he instantly was the popular kid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I love exactly. how much you know. <laughs> so um, my, I have a niece and a, and a nephew. They're nine and seven, and they're both huge fans of the show. And so they actually gave me a couple questions that they wanted me to ask you. Um, sure. And that was... When uh, did you know how much of the plot did you know from the beginning of filming? Like, did you know episode one, all the twists and turns that were going to come throughout the season? Actually, no, I did not. Because I don't really want spoilers. I, and I know I'm the one making the show, but I'm not a spoiler guy. So I'd read my parts and then, boom, close the book. Because I like the story of finding out all the secrets and finding I'll, oh, actually, I have a crazy story to tell you about that. So one time we had this cool Netflix dinner party. And so they're like, one of the producers, okay, so I didn't know that Pat plays the crooked, turns into the crooked man. So someone, a producer is talking to Jason and like, wow, I still can't believe you're the crooked man. He was my BFF though. So this changed everything. See, he's, he's like, I still can't believe you're the crooked man. It was like, yeah, and I, I'm, I drop my fork. I'm like, you are my enemy. And he's like, no way, this is a misunderstanding. I'm like, you, you, it was you all along. Imposter, vote him out, eject. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. That, what a great story. The, he's and like, give me one. He was like, give me one more chance. I was like, one chance. After the season <laughs> ended, I was like, one chance you get. Now that you are gone. And then second season, I'm just like, really? R really? This guy? <laughs> Bro. Hey, Bro. no spoilers, because I still got about three or four episodes left. So I'm, 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 I'm taking my way through Ooh, season two. I'm not, you see, I'm not, I'm not going into the details of it, but when you finish it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, I will. As soon as, when I finish it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tag you on Twitter or something like that and be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> And so the other question that they wanted me to ask was when you were fighting some, when you were filming the fight scenes with Pat and with the crooked man, how much of that was, was visual effects? And was it tough to be doing a lot of this stuff when you can't actually see the big beings in front of you? Uh, actually it was kind of hard. Actually, the, everything that was VFX, let me start with that the easiest part. So my power is VFX. The whole crooked man, mass, everything, that was VFX. Now, the part when um Mark starts crawling out of the crooked man while pulling himself out, that was partly VFX because they had to use him actually trying to do this, but he was behind a green screen, in front of a green screen. So it's like kind of VFX. So, but uh, yes, though, no, all of that was not there. I didn't have a model or anything. I So what I did was I made myself like a sort of thing to look at. I had to react to nothing. So I made I made a picture in my mind. I drew a picture in my mind of what I thought the Crooked Man would look like. And then I just fought it. That's I'm so blown cool. away by how smart you are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have a question. Yeah. Sure. What are your kids' names? 
So my, my, my uh, niece and nephew, their names are Joe and Ellie. Shout out to Joe and Ellie. Oh. Shout out to Joe and Ellie. They're going to love this. Thank you so much. That is so sweet. <laughs> of course. So, so, so when you are learning your lines, what's, what's kind of your process in, in learning your lines and kind of understanding what kind of emotions you need to put out in, in that time, in that scene? Actually, I just read everything that way, like, because not only do you have to know your line, but if you read a line, if you read everyone's line, then if they're like, they're, if they're crying, then I know I, I react off of them, too. So, like, also, I have to know my when, my, when my line comes in. So, you not only have to do that, but you also have, can react off of them. Like, ad libs and side notes, you also want to read those because... If you do that, you can like, you can get a better feel of the story. So like, say like someone's like mad in the story and I'm supposed to be mad, I'm going to react off of their mad. Like, are they frustrated? Are they mad? Like super angry? I'm going to react off of that mad. So it's like you just repeat it over and over and just memorize the script. Is it hard for you to memorize your lines at all? Or is it generally pretty quickly? Actually, no, because from a young age, I knew how to read really well because I read a lot of storybooks and I've been doing it since I was three. So from a young age, I already knew how to read. Like when I was at least six years old, I could read so good. So because at least from no, not from three, some from three, I could read so good. It was crazy. My mom was just surprised. She's like, you're three years old. Why are you reading this? I can't like, imagine how proud she is. Of you. <laughs> And so, like, I knew how to read from a young age. That's super well, cool. And it sounds like you have a really good memory as well. I'm kind of interested. When you're, when you're fighting the Crooked Man in your mind, how similar was the picture that you built in your head to what actually showed up on screen? You see what I thought? It's actually completely, it's kind of the same, but it's so completely different. What I thought was, I made, in my mind, a stick figure. But instead of just being straight lines, it was just like this, jagged. Yeah. That's what, but it was literally a stick figure just with jagged lines and lightning <laughs> blobs. That's and then awesome. you get out you get out there and you see the show and you're fighting a full-on storm. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that is not what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And like one of the great parts about Dion is he basically seems to almost as he can come up with new powers manifest them into real life i'm interested if you could do that but you could only do it once you got to pick one what would you pick as your superpower it's obviously hands down teleportation, teleportation. i love how confident you are in that yeah, very quick it would, so, it would be so useful though and you would never be late for work because you don't gotta worry about traffic just teleport there Literally, there were so many uses. No, you're right. I tell my girlfriend this all the time. I would, if I tell someone needs to invent teleportation because it's so they useful. Do. Yes. They do. Or at least a teleportation device. Anything. Yes. <laughs> like in the Henry Stickman game, the little teleportation device, at least make that. At least. We just can't let it fall into the wrong hands because that's yeah. a villain origin story right there if I've ever heard one. Hey, but we do got the hero over here though. We do a real life. Exactly. Superhero. You're there. You're ready. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I like that your name's Mind Mover because that was always my uh, like telekinesis is always the one that I would pick because for one, you could make yourself fly, which I always thought was really cool. But two, I, I love yeah, sports. I and so like I figured like I could play in the NBA and just make all the shots I'd want to. I could be the best <laughs> pitcher in Major League Baseball because no one would ever know where that ball is going to end up. <laughs> Yeah. You know what? I already did the NBA thing technically in the uh, basketball scene of season one. True. Yep, very true. <laughs> very true. <laughs> so, if you if you could name one uh, one favorite hero from Marvel and one favorite hero from DC, who would you pick? It is most definitely overall Spider Man Miles Morales over. All hands down. Love that. <laughs> I love. Have that. you played the uh, PlayStation Miles Morales video game? I do. I actually beat it. I beat both the Spider-Man games. They're great hey. games, huh? 
me too. I just got my PlayStation five, uh, right around Christmas. And so that was the first two things I did was I played the first Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales. <laughs> yeah. I, that's, I got mine on Christmas too. Eh. <laughs> that's awesome. So if you could play someone in the MCU, who would it be? Would it be Miles Morales? Definitely. <laughs> and if it wasn't Miles Morales, Black Panther. Black oh Panther. my gosh. I could see you in a Black Panther movie. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> Give it that tw- 10 cool. years. Yes, 10 years. I'll, I'll, I'll be 20 years old in 10 years. Give it to me. Perfect. It'll be perfect. Hey, and then and we can have you in the TV role dad, for 15 years. And you got your TV dad, Michael B. Jordan, who you'll be ready to uh, go up against. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> <laughs> i'll pull up some of that kung fu on him oh like every, all right. everything he's taught you you throw it right back against them yes yeah let's pull that cobra kai the student becomes the teacher the student becomes the master yeah <laughs> we got i feel like we're the fans of all the same things because i love cobra kai too <laughs> you know what though i just wondered though my favorite what's your favorite superhero in dc mine personally is batman yeah, he's good. He is mine, good. I got mine, two. Mine is the Flash. The Flash. The Flash is, the Flash. The Flash because is cool. Me, I, Cause also in my old, I had a um, an old school musical. I'm not a musical. An old school recital. One time, I did a Marvel one and a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one. <laughs> so in the Marvel, and I mean in the DC one, I was um Flash, and for some reason now I've always loved Flash even before then. I finished the Flash show on Netflix. It took so long, though. It's a lot. But, uh, yeah, it's like those long shows, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a very long one. My, my, I'm a. I don't know if you've ever seen the cartoon Static Shock, but uh, that Static Shock is my favorite, and uh, as well as Batman Beyond. Those are my two favorite. I actually think Michael B. Jordan I- might be involved in a Static Shock project in the future. But uh, yeah, those are my Static two favorite. Shock. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. He is awesome. You should check him out if you don't know him. That was another Christmas present I got was my my girlfriend got me the DVDs of the first two seasons of Static Shock. And they are <laughs> they are fantastic. Yes. Oh, nice. So if you could act, if you could act with any actor, who would your dream like cast be to act with, to learn from? There's two people. Okay, let's hear it. Tom Holland and Zendaya. <laughs> That's- I love that. Now we got to get you on the Miles Morales train. Yeah, so we, we can have make that to. happen. We exactly. Do. We so do. How is that? How is your Spanish? Uh, no hablo español. Yeah, see, you could learn. Start. There's a lot of time to learn. You'd be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, know, like, I literally know like literally three words. I can't even make a sentence. There's time to learn. There's time. There's time. To learn. <laughs> Hey, you're good at memorizing lines. You can see exactly. pictures. You can create pictures in your head. It shouldn't be that hard. To learn You've been reading language. since you were three. I have the utmost faith in you. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so can you, Raising Dion hasn't been uh, renewed for a season three yet. Is, is, is there anything that you can tell us about that? Are you hoping to be able to continue the story? So, we're praying so hard that we get that season three, but if we do end up getting the season three, I'm going live about it as soon as it's announced. I'm gonna be like, "Yeah, we got season." Yeah, you deserve to have your own little party because that's that's quite an achievement. And it, we will be there on the live. If it's Instagram, wherever it is, we're gonna be there cheering you on as soon as it happens. Congratulating <laughs> you! Thanks. <laughs> So if hopefully, which it does, if season three gets renewed, if you could pick one superhero from anywhere in comics to join you for a team up in season three of Raising Dion, who would it be? Spider-Man. Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Spider-Man. That would be a great team. I like it. Yeah, I like it. You can get the costume on. You can even be, you could, you could do both. Yeah, I could though. I could. You could. Exactly. (laughs) All right. Well, we are so happy and thankful to have had you on. Like, this has been an absolute blast. If you got more questions for us, like we have nowhere to go, we can keep this running. But that was just it from our list of things on the interview. But thank you so much for doing this because this has been this has been awesome. Yeah, I think we've been blown away by how by how impressive you are, how talented, how smart, how mature. And I can't wait to see where your career takes you in the future. 
I just have one request. Oh, certainly. Yes. So, you, I want you, please, to tell everyone you know about Raising Dion, and I want you to watch it over and over again. That way, we probably have a better chance of getting season three. Will do. It's a great idea, and we're on it. It's going to be on the Agents of Fandom <laughs> Twitter, the Agents of Fandom Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. We're going to tell all our everywhere. fans. We're going to spread the word, and we're going to raise Thank those numbers you. on Netflix. <laughs> Putting it all, yeah, you know all throughout my school. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> We're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. Um, and there was one other thing. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to, as soon as we're not on air anymore, I might have to uh, get your PlayStation, uh, your PSN from you so we can start playing some games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Game on. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That. There we go. <laughs> game on. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Josiah. This has been awesome. Yeah, it's nice to see you. You as well. So everybody, make sure you check out Raising Dion on Netflix. There's two seasons out there already. We're hoping for a season three because it has been absolutely awesome so far. And say hi to our girl Esperanza for us because uh, <laughs> she's she's pretty awesome. Yes, yeah, she is. <laughs> Your best friend. Get her. Awesome. Well, that'll do it for today's episode of Agents of Fandom. We thank Josiah Young so much for joining us. Watch Raising Dion on Netflix. Check out the Agents of Fandom, wherever you get your podcasts, YouTube, all of our socials. That'll do it for us today. Peace. Peace. Peace.